everyone, welcome to The Fumble, I'm Britt Johnson. The NBA trade deadline has came and went, and I have all the highs and lows for you coming up, but first, follow me on social media at I am Britt Johnson, and click subscribe to The Fumble if you haven't already. All right, everyone, it's time to break down the winners and losers of this year's NBA trade season. First, let's begin with the biggest losers of the NBA trade season, and that has to go to ballers Nick Stoskis and Wade Baldwin, who both started Sunday morning still members of the Portland Trailblazers. Before the day's end, the two were traded to the Cavs, where they were there for several days before being traded from the Cavs to the Rockets on Wednesday, and finally being traded from the Rockets to the Pacers on Thursday, where, guess what guys, they got waved. <laughs> Saskis is a former 8th overall pick in the 2014 NBA Draft, and Baldwin was drafted 17th in 2016. Well, I hope you guys get a job real soon. Next trade loser also produced a W. The L, first of all, goes to the Knicks, who traded Porzingis last Thursday to the Dallas Mavericks, along with Tim Hardaway Jr., Courtney Lee, and Trey Burke. In exchange for Dennis Smith Jr., the expiring contracts of DeAndre Jordan and Wes Matthews, and two first-round picks. The biggest surprise here is why didn't the Knicks wait to shop around for better deals like, um, hello, <clears throat> Anthony Davis? The Knicks have been interested in Dennis Smith Jr., though, for a little while now, so it seems like they are hoping to make him the face of the franchise since, let's face it, Jordan and Matthews will both be free agents this summer. The Knicks also released NBA vet Cantor, which basically proves the Knicks are rebuilding yet again. But Porzingis goes to Dallas where he can make a push for a playoff spot, so he gets the W here. Only time will tell if the Knicks actually end up doing something good with all these trades. Again, only time will tell. A lot of time. Sticking with the Eastern Conference, the 76ers have made the biggest splash to let everyone else know they plan on going all the way this season. Earlier this week, they made a trade that rocked my world personally when they traded Shamit, Chandler, and Muscala, who actually just got traded from the Clippers to the Lakers, two first round picks and two second round picks to the Clippers in exchange for Boban, my Tobias Harris, who has become my favorite guy in the Clippers, and Mike Scott. Thursday, they also made another trade. The Magic are sending Jonathan Simmons a first round and a second round pick to the Sixers in exchange for the injured Markel Fultz. The Sixers also added Ennis the Menace, who has been playing pretty good off the bench as of late. Can you say winning for the Sixers? Well, all this moving from the Sixers got the Raptors a little nervous in the East, so they decided to go big as well. They made a big deal with the Memphis Grizzlies. Toronto is sending Jonas DeLon Wright, CJ Miles, and a 2024 second round pick to the Grizzlies for Mark Gasol, which is, I think, a win for both teams here, especially for Toronto, who only has a guarantee with Kawhi Leonard for the rest of this season. So the storyline all year has been go big or go home for Toronto, and it looks like they're going big, baby. In the West, one of the biggest wins was for the Sacramento Kings, who received Harrison Barnes from the Dallas Mavericks in exchange for Justin Jackson and Zach Randolph. If the Kings can secure a long-term deal with Barnes, he does have a player option for the 2019-2020 season for $25 million. I think this is going to be a good deal for the Kings. A player like Harrison Barnes can be just what the Kings need to be playoff contending teams. Of course, they're not going to win the Western Conference, but they're currently sitting in ninth place, and I think they can make a playoff run if and now that they have Harrison Barnes. Moving to what might be the most underrated, unnoticed win of the NBA trade. LeBron James and the Lakers. Well, they only made a small trade with the Clippers and didn't hit their big goal of securing Anthony Davis. The team can still sit a little less in the dumps. For starters, Lonzo Ball took to his IG to play the classic song, Bad Boys for Life. He did this to let all the haters know he ain't going nowhere. Not 
just the Lakers, but the whole Western Conference won because this trade season has been all about the Eastern Conference, and the Eastern Conference just got a whole lot stronger, making obviously the West a little easier to play for all the playoff contender teams besides, of course, the dark cloud that hangs all over the Western Conference, the Warriors. But baby steps, everyone. Let's take baby steps. I could go on and on about this NBA trade season, but it's time for me to head out. So I want to know who were your biggest winners and losers for the NBA trade deadline. Head to the comment section now and let me know. Don't forget to like this video, click subscribe, and shop the Fumble store for the latest game day gear. I'm your host, Britt Johnson for the Fumble, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.